This is truly a bombshell. President Donald Trump tried to order the Justice Department to prosecute not one, but two of his biggest adversaries, Hillary Clinton and James Comey. This story breaking in the New York Times late today. The story is that in the spring, Donald Trump told his White House counsel, Don McGahn, that he wanted the DOJ officials to explicitly prosecute Hillary Clinton and James Comey. So that right there is a potentially illegal act, and that is quite important given that obstruction is still under investigation in this White House. Now, what happened next is also important. Don McGahn, according to this New York Times report, refused and then went on to try to show Donald Trump in detail why this was not only a bad idea, but a potentially impeachably bad idea. He had his White House lawyers write this memo that you're looking at, basically, that is described in the Times, saying that if they went forward with this, the consequences would be damaging and, yes, would include, quote, possible impeachment. Now, that right there is a big deal. It is usually, of course, Donald Trump's critics and adversaries who are talking about his potential impeachment. We don't use the I word lightly on this show because impeachment is an extreme constitutional remedy. Now, we don't even know if Donald Trump read that memo, but we do know, according to The New York Times, that it was his own lawyers and his chief counsel, Don McGahn, saying, Mr. President, if you do this, you could be impeached. And that's not all. The Times reporting that Donald Trump would go on to continue to privately agitate for these investigations of Hillary Clinton, obviously his chief rival in politics, and James Comey, his former FBI director. Now, this news, I want to be clear with you, is a scale way beyond anything else we have seen in legal controversies with Donald Trump. And that's saying something. You may recall, of course, that he did attempt to get Bob Mueller fired. Now, that was wrong. It may not have been lawful. That's something under debate. But there is a debate to be had there because the commander in chief has such big powers over his agencies like the DOJ. Tonight, I want to tell you before we get to our, our guests, and we have some great guests on this, this is a different category than even the removal of special counsel Mueller. This is a report tonight for the first time that the president of the United States actively and explicitly tried to prosecute Hillary Clinton, a political opponent, and James Comey, the key witness, of course, in the obstruction probe. That request, if it happened, that order, if it was given, is blatantly unconstitutional, which is why, of course, Trump's own lawyers, according to this report, warned him that it was not only unlawful, but impeachable. Now, James Comey is, of course, at the center of the Russia probe. Trump fired him and then linked him and that firing to the probe. And we know now, tonight, for the first time, also was trying to prosecute him. This reporting is right in Bob Mueller's strike zone, which we're going to get into with our experts tonight, because he can investigate this new account that Donald Trump was trying to fire that man that he once embraced, James Comey, and then get him prosecuted and prosecuting Hillary Clinton, that is all potential grounds for obstruction of justice. Trump's own lawyers warning him not only the investigation request was unlawful, but again, I want to read from this report that it could, quote, lead to the beginning of impeachment proceedings. One way to look at this story based on Donald Trump's own lawyers, not my reporting, but his own lawyers, is that if this went through, the odds of the impeachment of Donald Trump would have risen dramatically. Meanwhile, Congress is going to learn a lot more on this matter. That will likely come when former White House counsel Don McGahn speaks out if he ever gets past the Mueller probe and is called to testify, as former officials can be called to do, before what will become a Democratic House. The last point before I get to our guests, everything we just told you, everything we're learning tonight, which is obviously big, this is news to us. I admit it was big news when it came into the newsroom. It may be news to you. It is not news to the special counsel, because whatever Don McGahn knows... Bob Mueller already knows. We've got a range of experts. I want to begin with a former U.S. Senator, Robert Torricelli, Neera Tandon, a former top aide to both Hillary Clinton and President Obama, and former Watergate special prosecutor, Nick Ackerman. Uh, Senator, I gave you uh, and the viewers my take on why this is so significant. On a scale of zero to ten, where did this story fall for you? Uh, and what does it say about the man occupying the White House tonight? Well, first, there is, of course, a difference between the president uh, proposing this, which would be outrageous in its, itself, and him actually contacting the Justice Department and uh, attempting to order it. The first is bad government, unethical and inexcusable. The second would be an impeachable offense. So uh, let, let, let's try to assume that this is a thought that he had. It's something he wanted to do. And I'm not he was assuming that, out Senator. Of it by staff. Senator, Senator, I'm not assuming that. I got a report from the New York Times that says he used his liaison to the DOJ, which is Don McGahn, 
and told him, let's do this. And Don McGahn put a stop to it. That's the reporting. Unless you have something other than the New York Times, no, we no, are past no, I'm, no, assuming. I'm just, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just hoping that 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 the system worked enough that he was blocked or shut down before the, the question will become not only his intent, was there actually any action taken which became an abuse of power? Yeah, an I'm, abuse only, of I'm power only pushing you. I'm only pushing you. I'm all, I'm all for giving people the benefit of the doubt in life. Uh, but the facts are what they are tonight, unless you have something different from the Times, which is this is what he tried to do. No, no, I, no, I, no, I don't. What I'm hoping is here is that, that, that McCann not only gave advice, but, but, but stopped him short of, of, of an action which would have set this in motion and become an abuse of power. It'll be a question of, did he talk about it? Did he attempt to do it? Or was there actually an, an affirmative act? that set this in motion. If there was, you are right, it is an, it is an abuse of power. What, what, I think it, what I think it really raises, uh, I hope for those who are around Donald Trump is, we have a president right or wrong who is the most inexperienced in the, the culture of the office, the laws of the country, the operations of the Constitution. Having a chief of staff and a council in whom he has sufficient confidence and enough strength to stop these uh, extra constitutional impulses of his is so important. And tonight, as we sit here tonight, he does not have a council, and he does not have enough confidence right. well, and enough working with the chief of staff to save himself. Let me bring in Tandon, the <sighs> senator. Uh, Nira, I'm going to be very blunt tonight because this is a big story. Uh, senator Torricelli, who's an expert on the show, sounds very classic Washington Democrat, which is bending over backwards to find some bright spot in a very dark story. Uh, as for Donald Trump's inexperience. He has been very clear about what he wants to do. I want to play him in a debate with your old boss, Nira, and get your analysis. Take a look. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. Uh, Nira, how do you view uh, the reports here that Donald Trump took that long-standing pledge, lock her up, you'd be in jail, I'll investigate her, and tried to make it real? I, I mean, I think this is a scandal at a 15 on a 1 to 10 level. And I think the idea that the president is naive or he is inexperienced is ridiculous. He was essentially trying to use the apparatus of a, the state to punish his political enemies, Hillary Clinton and James Comey. And if we, if this happened in another country, we'd have the State Department saying it's no longer a democracy. Just because he was stopped by his, his counsel informing him it was an impeachable offense does not take away from the fact that the president essentially wanted to break the law. And I, for one, think it is something that doesn't it, it doesn't warrant an investigation. I mean, the Republicans should be investigating this tomorrow before the Democrats come in because they are a blank check for this guy. They won't. But it is one of the most, I think it is amongst the most uh, outrageous things that have come out of this White House in two years of outrages. The, the things that people were like thought were a fantasy that could occur are actually things Donald Trump wanted to do to not just Hillary Clinton, remind a person who won the Democratic nominee and was his competitor, but James Comey, who was central part of the Mueller investigation. I, yep. I, I don't think there's any way to look at this that isn't a, that shouldn't scare every single American. Now, Ari, this is absolutely off the charts. Donald Trump is basically running his office like he's the head of a banana republic, uh, trying to put his former opponent in jail, trying to put James Comey in jail. And what is really concerning is this isn't just an isolated event that occurred last spring. This is something that's going on right now with his appointment of this hack Whitaker as the acting attorney general. I mean, why did he put Whitaker in there? Why didn't he go through the Senate confirmation? Because he's looking for somebody that will do his bidding to get rid of the Mueller investigation and to undertake the kinds of illegal investigations that he wants done. 
That's why Whitaker was put in there. That's why Sessions was fired. It's all about him trying to undermine the rule of law, which is the basis of this country, which was the foundation of this country. He wants to go back to the time of the English kings where anything goes. And that's yeah, I, where we're headed. I would just say that Donald Trump exhausted the benefit of the drought about 18 months ago. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and Nira, Nira, we talked about your boss, and, and that's Hillary Clinton, and they had a pitched battle in the campaign. Mm -hmm. James Comey spent most of his time rising through government and Republican administrations. He is one Absolutely. of the individuals who appeared to stand up to Donald Trump in those early months. Uh, to Nick's point, when people were trying to figure out, do you go the Whitaker route or do you go the Comey route? And we know what happened. Here was Donald Trump. Uh, making what lawyers call an admission against interest, admitting uh, that he was angry with and fired Comey because Comey did his job in the investigation. Apparently, tonight we learned that's also why he then tried to get the former FBI director jailed, which, again, is not something that uh, we like to think about as happening inside the United States. It's happening. Uh, take a look. I was going to fire Comey, knowing there was no good time to do it. And in fact, when I decided to just do it, I said to myself, I said, you know, this Russia thing with Trump and Russia is a made up story. It's an excuse by the Democrats for having lost an election that they should have won. Nira? Yeah, I mean, I don't understand why this isn't just another example of obstruction of justice. Using the Department of Justice to uh, essentially retaliate and punish a central witness to your possible crime. I mean, remember, Comey is the person who Trump was basically talking to to, to discourage his investigation. I don't know why. I mean, obviously, this is part of a pattern of obstruction of justice. And I, I, I agree with your earlier assessment that uh, this is likely to have been something that Special Prosecutor Mueller knows and her Special right. Counsel Mueller knows. But I think that as for the American public, this is another element in a crime committed by, possibly committed by the President of the United States, which we should obviously be deeply worried about. Right. Well, that's Ari, Ari, there's no I, I don't know that, that there's... Senator, Senator, I'm going to give you a final word. Let me show you one more item, uh, again, in the context of Don McGahn, which is uh, Donald Trump, again, by the New York Times reporting, did try to remove Bob Mueller. It's Don McGahn. Um, who basically stopped that uh, it, when it was attempted in December, and Mueller knows all that. Uh, uh, analyze that as well in the context of what we're learning as a final thought, Senator. Well, I don't know that there's obstructive justice here. What there clearly is, is we're on the line here in an abuse of power. This is something that simply don't do in the United States. We don't use the mechanisms of government and the Justice Department to punish political enemies. It is not something we do in our political culture. It's not something we do in our laws. But it does raise again. Right now, there's one thing to have Donald Trump if he, has, if he is surrounded by people who contain his instincts. But with Whitaker as Attorney General, McCann gone as White House Counsel, and Kelly potentially going out the door of White, of White House Chief of Staff. There's a big difference between Donald Trump surrounded by capable people who respect the Constitution and Donald Trump on his own. And we are facing tonight the nightmare of Donald Trump revisited on his own without restraints. And the story you're carrying tonight is an example of what an unrestrained Donald Trump can look like in abuse of power on a scale to which this country is not accustomed. Right, and that is so much more severe. My thanks to Senator Torricelli and Neera Tanded. Uh, Nick, stay with me because I want a prosecutor to ride along with a reaction from Congress tonight. A Democratic Congressman, Mike Quigley, who serves on the Intelligence Committee. Uh, thanks for, for joining us on this important story, sir. Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, let me start with the question to you. Uh, what is the significance in this New York Times report? Do you see conduct that could be an element of obstruction or that is unlawful? Uh, I see... It depends exactly what Mr. McGahn says to us. Uh, I'm very interested in Mr. McGahn testifying before Congress. What were the circumstances? What exactly was said? How did he respond? Did the president talk to anyone else? How Obviously, what people need to understand in the bigger picture is when the president said that he had complete control and authority over the Justice Department, it wasn't just his belief that he could stop an investigation of himself or his friends. It also meant, like a true autocrat, he could attack his enemies or those who disagreed with him. This is extraordinarily dangerous. 
And you and you mentioned McGahn, who's a lawyer. They might uh, they might try to invoke executive privilege the way they did with Steve Bannon and others to block that. Are you prepared when you take the gavels in uh, January to subpoena Mr. McGahn on these issues if he won't come voluntarily? No, as a true team player, I'm going to work with the chairman to be Adam Schiff on the Intelligence Committee and my colleagues there to come up with a working plan. How do we go forward? Where is the Mueller investigation at that time? Where's the right. Senate and the House investigations? So I, I, take that as a, I take that as an answer TBD, and I understand moving mm -hmm. judiciously. Let me play for you as well as we look at the import of this story. James Comey, who what everyone thinks of him, and I've criticized him uh, with regard to some of his government tenure, um, there has never been any evidence whatsoever, any grounds for any kind of criminal investigation. It is only, according to this reporting, that Donald Trump wanted to blackball an opponent and someone that was dangerous to him in the probe, the probe, of course, that, that your committee is involved with. Take a listen to James Comey's testimony. I mean, it's my judgment that I was fired because of the Russia investigation. I was fired in some way to change, or the endeavor was to change the way the Russia investigation was being conducted. That is, a, that is a very big deal. I don't think it's for me to say whether the conversation I had with the president was an effort to obstruct. I took it as a very disturbing thing, very concerning. I was honestly concerned that he might lie about the nature of our meeting, and so I thought it really important to document. James Comey providing the facts as he knew them regarding the president's motivations for the firing. Uh, in your view, based on what we know, is it reasonable to probe whether Donald Trump was now trying to get James Comey prosecuted and jailed for that same criminal purpose? And if so, is that an impeachable offense? Well, let's take it one step at a time. <clears throat> Obstruction often comes in a pattern of behavior. I do believe that the firing of Mr. Comey was for the, that Russian thing. Uh, it is part of a pattern of obstruction by the White House and those complicit with him as part of the House Intelligence Committee on, unfortunately, my the Republican side. So this is just one more element of that in addition to his various tweets and other actions by the president to object. I ask the American public to be patient. Uh, you talked about the I word. Let the Mueller investigation be completed. Let us finish this. Let's go. Th let's, we're going to get one shot at this to do the right thing. Let's completely investigate this, uh, this recent allegation and the information from Mr. McGahn and take the American public and give the American public all well, the information it needs. I know you're speaking colloquially. I want to be clear. We rarely use the I word on this newscast. Tonight we I are using it. it in the context of reporting that Trump's own top lawyer uh, warned him about the I word, warned him that this could lead to impeachment proceedings. So that's sort of what brought it into the oh, discussion. Sure. And before I, before I let you go, and I'm over on time, but I do want to ask you, one of the things that happens a lot in Congress is they, sped up, they set up special committees to investigate things. There's been a lot of talk about Russia collusion in 2016, and Mueller obviously in the lead on that. But don't you think, and I wonder what you and your colleagues are going to do, if we learned that a president standing alone was trying to jail the former FBI director and their political opponent, if that was learned about Barack Obama as a goal against John McCain or Mitt Romney, wouldn't that alone require some greater investigation? Is that something the House Democrats should look at as their own special committee? Uh, are we being normalized into this, this banana republic uh, conduct that is anything but normal? I, I don't want to diminish what the House Select Committee on Intelligence can do. I have complete faith that if given subpoena power and the ability to investigate this, they will get to the truth. I think any president that does what Mr. McGahn warned against actually completed, that is an extraordinary abuse of power. I am not minimizing this at all. What the president is doing is a pattern of obstruction. Well, I want us to be thorough and complete. Let's go through with this investigation and take its natural course. I have faith that we don't need a special committee. I do believe the House Committee on Intelligence can do the work. Well, and just to wrap the news, uh, because we've heard so much from you, Congressman, I appreciate you joining us in the big story. You're saying tonight, number one, you want to hear from McGahn, but whether or not you'd issue a subpoena is a larger conversation with the chair. Uh, number two, you think the Congress will get to the bottom of this. You don't need a special committee. And number three, uh, you view this type of act, if achieved, as a huge abuse of power. I appreciate you breaking some of that news with us. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below.
You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.